Hello, future millionaires, and welcome back to the Get Rich Slow podcast. I'm your co-host, Adrian Shermer, with my other co-host, Robert Delavan here, and we are joined today. Hi, hey, Rob. Uh, good morning, everybody. Joined today by Eric Peterson. Hey, Eric. Thanks hey guys, so much for you your time. Yeah. Um, Eric works in the health insurance industry, and I think this is a really important thing to touch on because, um, let's face it, everybody gets sick, um, even... Uh, even those among us with great immune systems, bad immune systems, whether you've got you know a long-term issue that you deal with or you just need something to cover you in case. Um, insurance is something that's pretty much a requirement. Uh, it's literally a requirement in certain situations. Um, and one of the groups of people who struggle most with this is those who don't have the, the buying capacity of a big mega company. Um, to just offer them an insurance policy that's potentially supplemented by that employer, especially. Um, and I know that uh, I'm going to throw my wife out there as an example. She owns a salon. Um, insurance for her is by grace of me having a job. So I think a lot of people end up having to choose who they're going to work for um, to make sure that they have uh, uh, coverage. I know that when my brother was in the hospital, my father had to keep his job that he didn't particularly like at a car dealership just because we couldn't get medical coverage. Otherwise, him leaving would have been the end of my brother's uh, coverage for his condition. So um, Eric, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you being here with us today. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, this is this is also a fun topic. Um, people just don't know about it, but there's this, there's this, uh, you know, over the last what decade or so, um, affordable care act, Obamacare, um, changes. I mean, this thing has been evolving. This podcast will not be about, you know, judgment one way or the other. Nobody's going to solve the national problem of health insurance <laughs> and uninsured and pre-existing well, conditions do. and all the tag words and, you know, all of that sort of thing. Um, you know, yeah. I, we're, we're not so arrogant as to think that we can do that. Yeah. But, this isn't the ethics of healthcare. Uh, this is no, e exactly. the best way to tack this problem that is just, it's, it's out there. It, it's real. It's exactly. going to exist whether you have one opinion or another on it. So what's right. the most effective way to get through it? So we just, we just want to pick Eric's brain and a little bit of more background uh, with Eric. Uh, he's, uh, he's been in the insurance industry for what, a little over three years. Yeah. And um, he is in uh, primarily focuses on everything from like one or two people, health insurance business, all the way up to, uh, I mean, you can do 200, 500. I mean, you, you could do basically unlimited number of employees on the top end. Is that right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's exactly right. And it, it, like you were kind of saying, Rob, it could be as small as two employees, a business with two employees <clears throat> up into the hundreds. Um, it, it really doesn't matter the size. Um, what matters more is the demographics of that group. And so that's what we, that's the information that we need to gather is um, just the basics, you know, their, their name, their, their age, their gender, and their home zip code. So then we understand like, where does this, this core of employees live? Um, <clears throat> I think you guys kind of said this, but our focus is on um, group health insurance for businesses. We can help individuals. We can help those unique situations like your wife, Adrian, that, like a, a business owner that owns a salon that has contractors who are not necessarily W-2 employees, but they're still members of, of her workforce. Really? Um, businesses are all sh different shapes and sizes. And so it doesn't really matter to us um, we don't hone in on a specific type of business or a specific size. What we hone in on is the ability to understand what the needs are, understand what the demographics of the company are, and then go out there and see what options are available to them. Because a lot of people and a lot of business owners, they don't have the time nor the expertise or the, the experience right. to be able to have strong opinions about what works, what doesn't work. They might have strong opinions about, like you guys were saying, <laughs> the healthcare industry, sure. um, but our job is to shine light on what options are available to them. So that's kind of what we try to focus on is really understanding um, what the business is, what their employee profile looks like, and then just take it from there. So let me, let me back up just a touch um, because I want to make sure that our audience knows how deeply you're steeped in this and why Adrian and I consider you our personal experts yeah. or expert. Um, so JB Nibley, uh, you guys, you told me a story, I don't know, in the last few months 
about how I think it was your, what was it, your grandfather-in-law <laughs> um, that was one of the first uh, first health insurance like brokerage companies ever in in this country in the history of this country huh. um no not i don't want to overstep the bounds on that but okay. he was he was involved very early in the state of oregon for group health coverage for businesses okay. exactly what we do now he was early in that and so what what era in, uh well our agency was founded in 1962 so it was a short time after that you know, group okay. health insurance hasn't been around forever. You know, I don't have the Wikipedia page of group health in front of me to, to know what the exact history <laughs> okay. and timeline is, but um, it hasn't existed forever. And so um, when it was getting started in the state of Oregon, because as you know, healthcare varies across state lines. So when it was getting started and really ramping up in Oregon, yeah, my grandfather-in-law, um, my wife's grandfather, was really at the forefront of that. And so that's been a big part of our agency for JB Nibley Insurance basically since then. So for a lot of years, our office has experience. I might be newish to the game, certainly by comparison, um, but uh, yeah, it's been something that our agency has been involved with for a really long time. Right, so you have the team behind you, the experience yourself. Um, obviously, uh, the, we consider you that expert, that the go-to person. Um, and obviously, you know, we refer business to you and so on. Um, so there's a level of trust here. So let's build out like an avatar of, of just, uh, and let's use Adrian's, Adrian's wife. Um, yeah. Her name's Erica. She owns uh, Vivid Chromatics over mm -hmm. in, uh, I, I would call it Southeast Portland. Southeast side of Portland. Yep. It's right on the border of Southeast Northeast, but um, beautiful salon. Uh, she's had it up and running for what, two years now? Uh, well, no, it's a year because, uh, our the good pandemic. old friend, uh, pandemic. Yeah. There you go. To shut her down there within about a week and a half of opening, but she just had her one year anniversary. So, okay. um, and she's slated out with, uh, gosh, there's probably eight gals in there right now. Yeah. And all of them are independent contractors, right? Yeah. Basically. Yeah. And, but yeah, they pay rent. Almost none of them have, you know, any kind of health insurance. So what does that look like? You know, how would you tackle something like that, Eric? Because that's a big deal, especially for business owners or, mm -hmm. you know, people that are working for small business, especially is, does it offer insurance? Oh, it doesn't. Now I got to go get it from, you know, my partner or whatever. Um, this is a thing. And this is, I mean, you would know these numbers more than I would, but my understanding is medical reasons for bankruptcy is the single biggest reason. Yeah. Um, now that's a, I know that's a fact. I know that that's other things follow that, but yeah. you know, you have serious medical issues without the, the safety net of good health, health insurance coverage. Um, you know, chances are you're going to probably declare bankruptcy. So, so, you know, take it from there. There's the avatar eight hairdressers all working at Erica's uh, salon, you, you know, how would you tackle that? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. And there isn't a clear cut answer for every situation, but if we were to take Adrian's wife's situation where she owns a business and basically rents space to um, individual contractors, um, what she would first want to do is decide to what extent she wants to support or contribute toward health coverage for her quote unquote employees. Um, in, a, in, a, like in its most basic form, group health coverage doesn't care as much about what type of business, what type of product you're selling or what service you provide. They care more about this group of people that needs health insurance, right? And that's why the demographics of that group is much more important than whether we're selling widgets or we're a hair salon. And so what Adrian's wife would want to do is decide, like, do I want to um, contribute to these individuals health plan like a, like an employer would do if they were regular W2 employees um, and sort of offer that um, contribution as sort of a just a benefit to working there. Right. You know, really, in a nutshell, um, health care coverage is is part of your employee benefits package, right? Sure. There's just certain benefits to working at certain companies and health um, health insurance happens to be probably the biggest, most common one um, with an employer. 
Um, yeah. But you'd want to start with that. Like, so figure it gets out, like, expected okay, after a certain level, I think. I mean, you, yeah, totally. you start making over like, a certain amount per year. You're like, okay, what are what's the health insurance? When right. you're interviewing for a job, I would imagine that comes up a lot. You know, in fact, they probably just proactively tell you what it is and show you what it, what's available. Um, yep. In, in the case of a business owner who who basically rents space to other workers, um, she would just have to decide like, do I want to be involved in that or do I just want to like help steer them toward finding it themselves? You know, and those are two very different things because one you're financially invested and the other you're just sort of like giving them a flyer and a pamphlet and making a suggestion about, hey, here's here's where you might try to go find it yourself. But from a, a money standpoint, she's out of it. So that's where we would start. And if she decides that, you know what, I want to contribute like a typical is like um, an employer will pay 50% of the premium for health insurance. So if she says that I want to do that, um, then that would then we, we would be able to pencil that in and say, okay, well, that's what the employer is going to contribute. And then we would just collect the demographics of it again, just like name, age, gender, home zip code to understand then which carriers provide um, coverage in those areas. So let me, and then let me, there's little questions that can come up along the way, but that's really how you get that conversation started. So let me, let me stop you there, Eric. So um, I, I want the audience to hear the, the specifics. So like the why, right? So when you say name, age, health, that sort of thing, demographics, if the average hairdresser in that salon is Mid 30s. 60, yeah, it's going to be different. <laughs> she suddenly hires a bunch of... <laughs> is is different than 30 right like you're gonna have different cost structure there right like it's 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 based on costs and 60 year olds are much more expensive to insure on average than 30 year olds right totally yeah and that's why the demographics is hugely important they're not going to ask you if who smokes cigarettes or if you have pre-existing conditions it's no longer legal to ask questions like that um but yeah, they definitely want to know your age because that's a, that has a huge impact. They also want to know your gender because there's all this, all these statistics about, I mean, you guys have been a part of underwriting and you understand like in any industry, underwriters want to know what's really going on. And so you can learn a lot about the, the likelihood of something bad happening based on certain information, right? right? And so in the healthcare world, your age and your gender are the two biggest factors, um, you know, and so they, you put that information in and then they return quotes based on how many people we're talking about and what that average age is. Because Robert, like you said, yes, it's more expensive to insure someone who's 60 than someone who's 22. Right. And then it's important to know with your guys's model at JB Nibley, um, you're then, you're basically, I believe the word is like appointed um, in that you can broker out and find the best fit based on, you know, age and gender and location, that sort of thing through Providence or Kaiser or Regents, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, which is very national. Kaiser is very national. Providence is more like, I think it's more West Coast, Um, but Moda, Pacific Source. I mean, like you can go across, you have choices. And that's the idea is, is you can then shop for them as the expert, right? Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's what we do. We actually have a quoting tool where we input the demographic information in the system and then quotes are returned from each of the carriers that you mentioned. And so from that, we have a great initial start of like, hey, here's what's available. Now, as you guys know, and as your, as your listeners know, there's a lot of options within one insurance carrier, right? Sure. You yeah. can choose your own deductible. You can choose, do you want... Um, in network, out of network um, opportunities. Like there's just all these different choices that you have um, as an individual with one provider. So what we try to do is try to isolate it or narrow it down to maybe one or two carriers that we feel like fit your profile and fit the, from a, a cost standpoint are the most economical. And then hand that over to you as, as the business owner or the HR professional or whoever the, the primary contact is. And just then have them take a look at it it's no small decision. So we always encourage folks to take a little bit of time to look at it, maybe ask for feedback from some key employees, maybe who have specifically wondered, hey, what's our situation with health coverage? Sometimes you don't wanna open up too big a can of worms by taking a 
a, a poll of, of all your employees right. about which sure. they want. But, sure. you know, just figure out the best way to kind of narrow it down. And then we answer questions, go back and forth to try to make sure that they land on something that makes sense for not only them and their business, for the business owner, but also for their employees, right? Because that that's something that's really, health insurance is really personal. It's expensive. It's a big decision for an employer to make on behalf of their employees. Does, so, go ahead, Adrian. I'm just, I, I want to dig into this. What's the, what's the drive then of why does someone like my wife choose to do this policy? Let's say she, whether she is or she isn't contributing, is there a collective bargaining power that comes into play here? Is there a difference between this and these eight girls maybe just going out and on their own and, and finding an insurance company? I mean, obviously the shopping is a factor, um, but you know, let's be honest, brokers exist in, in all our fields, right? Uh, there's people out there who can cross shop. That's not a novel idea. So what, uh, yeah, let's use this great, keep using these group of girls as our, our avatar, as you say, Rob. Um, and you know, what's, what's the win for them smashing all their resources together? Yeah, good question. So, um, most carriers, if not all that I'm aware of, um, they don't just open their doors up for anyone to walk in any individual to walk in and buy insurance coverage from them. They have to do it through, either a group plan through their employer and or through a licensed agent like ourselves. So that's the strength in having an independent agent do it for you is to that we have that relationship. We are appointed by that insurance carrier to um, sell their services, their plans on their behalf. And we can then be sort of that um, middleman that understands like, okay, here, here's what your options are. Here's why this makes sense. Here's why it m might not make sense. We can kind of like run interference, so to speak, to make sure that they're actually landing with the best coverage that's available. So it just gives them like power that, okay, I'm having someone kind of do the legwork for me to understand what's available. And quite frankly, this, this option wouldn't be available to us if we didn't go through a licensed appointed agency. So okay. that's the reason. So, so more options. Let me um, dispel a little bit of a myth for our audience is um, you're being paid by, you know, that carrier and nobody's going to pay extra because they're going through a professional such as yourself. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, so it's, the, it's the way that we're compensated, that comes directly from the insurance carriers. Right. So, you know, people who are like, oh, I don't know, you know, Eric's, you know, going to make a bunch of money on this. Right? Yeah. yeah. There's well, no cut out the middle man model here. It, exactly. There's, there's no like, get licensed yourself <laughs> to save 30%, you know, right. it, it just, it doesn't work that way. So that's correct. I, I just, I just want to make sure. Just to also be clear just about the cost, like um, similar to home and auto insurance, those costs and prices are regulated by the government. So we don't have, even if we wanted to say, you know, I feel like we could really squeeze some extra dollars out of this client, which we would never do. And it's hard, like, so I'm kind of laughing, but mm -hmm. if, if we wanted to do that, it's not legal to do that. Um, right. You can't, as an agency, you can't mark up the price. Um, and the cost is what it is. It's on a, like, they literally have a rate sheet, you know, and they have an, an actuary table that shows like that, like that line of like, it's more expensive to insure people as they get older. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that, those are the rates. They are what they are. Um, some carriers have an appetite for people in certain zip codes because that's where they have um, physicians, offices and hospitals. And that's why they're able to offer those rates. Other carriers, they just have different sensitivities. And so that is what it is. It doesn't depend uh, it doesn't vary from one agent to the next. What what varies from one agency to the next is the service level. And that's where we try to really um, make sure that we're going the extra mile to make sure that like clients feel like, hey, they know what they're talking about. They follow up, they follow through, and they're a good resource for us. And so that's really our position. So audience, I'm sure you're hearing a common theme here um, in every one of our episodes is <laughs> you need to have somebody who is an expert in their field and actually cares and is trustworthy yeah. on your side. Uh, don't waste your time. You don't need to Google it. Um, uh, Google is a shitty lawyer. We all know that. Uh, <laughs> Do not get um, your legal advice from uh, also, also, probably a not so good uh, health insurance broker um, amongst yeah. just about every other topic. Uh, the, the point being is, is surround yourself with these professionals. Let's remember we're playing chess, not checkers. Uh, so let's, uh, 
uh, let, let's have somebody like Eric and JB Nibley on your side and make these yeah. decisions uh, knowingly with a focus, with, with intention. Yeah. Um, what especially else? if you got employees, especially if you're self-employed. Oh man. This is going to be a major, there are people who will use this as the opportunity to save money. And that's just not the way to do it when you're self-employed. It's, it's such right. a, it's such a sad mistake that a lot of small businesses make that they don't even research down this pathway because, hey, I'm not going to call this guy up and find a way to spend extra money each month. I, I'm, I finally got profitable. I don't want to spend the extra cash. Right. Um, it'll find its way out of your pocket um, when right. something happens. So it's, uh, um, it's, I think it's better to just get out in front of it and to you know take this on as soon as you can. Eric, you said you could take, uh, so it could be me and one employee. Yeah, I mean, literally, we good. we insure some businesses that have two employees. Right, that's great. Um, the the I think, and this is for the business owners out there, but frankly, uh, our all of our employee audience too. Yeah, is it matters what insurance your employer has and what you're providing as an employer to your employees. So have that conversation with somebody. You're going to be more competitive. You're going to. Mm -hmm people and keep people from a talent standpoint at a much higher level if you're offering this. And the yeah. flip side of that is if you're an employee and you're out there and you're trying to hack life, which is the whole point of this, this podcast, yeah. um, you know, what we're trying to do is hack life in a smarter way. Uh, you shop around, look at what your employers are offering. And, uh, you know, frankly, <laughs> you talk can, to an expert, <laughs> you can talk to an expert. Um, yeah. so that that's, that's the key. Um, we'll make sure to, uh, copy, uh, your website, all of your contact information, Eric, uh, yep. in the comments when we post, um, and so on. Uh, you can also, you know, we'll, uh, uh, be able to direct people to, to be able to get in touch with you. Um, thank you for, uh, for be just dropping a little bit of knowledge. I know we could probably talk for hours about this, but, uh, you know, this is such an important topic. Um, so th thank you for that. I'm just that much more educated. Um, you know, we all need it. Uh, idiots in the room, right? That's, yeah. that's what we need to figure out. <laughs> Teach so. us. Well, Teach at, us. at the end Teach of the day, guys, like, and I'm sure you talked about this in other podcasts, like when you're talking with an expert, you're not committing to anything as you're having that initial conversation right. with an expert, yeah. no matter what it's about. Yeah. You know, I'm sure you guys have um, really upstream early conversations with individuals where you know that they're not going to make a decision on whatever it is that day. But what you're trying to do is just plant the seed, put the line in the water, you know, whatever the, the cheesy line is, so that when it floats downstream, that they feel more educated as, as a consumer, um, as an individual, as a business owner, whatever their profile may be, and that they know that you're there with them in the raft, you know, if we keep right. a little down the river, that um, that, that's what we try to do is like, I'm not wearing a carrier's logo on my polo trying to sell a product for a certain price to a certain consumer. Yeah. We're more we don't about have to call like you by Monday to get the deal. If there's not a, yeah. a fire sale going on that I'm going to miss out <laughs> on. Exactly. Yeah. We just try to be like, Hey, who are you? What do you think you need? Maybe we can offer some suggestions about what they, maybe they don't know what they need, you know, but those are just suggestions as all those are. And then we just sort of like put one foot in front of the other and maybe it will lead to something that they're like, you know what, we need to do this. This makes sense for our business. This makes sense from a talent retention standpoint. If I'm an employer, um, this makes sense. And, and they feel yeah. good about all the legwork we've done um, upstream from that. And that's really my MO is to just try to educate people, just try to shine light on things. And you never know where it's going to lead. But at the end of the day, if we can just sort of hang our hat on, we, we gave them the information that they needed and let them make the decision. That's all we can ask for. Absolutely. Education Thank forward, you. guys. Thank you for being our expert, Eric. Uh, thank you for your time today. And um, we'll uh, catch you next time, future millionaires. Thanks, guys. There, next time I'll wear a flower shirt, too. Sorry, I didn't get that. Oh, yeah, uh, I didn't. Go. Hey, yes. man. <laughs> you didn't get the memo. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Take care. Have a good one, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.